Hey, fellow real estate investors. Some of the biggest questions that I continuously hear is, what market should I invest in? How do I actually track if my market is doing well or not? And how do I actually predict future trends within my market? The way to solve each and every one of those questions is with data. But how do we actually obtain the data that we need to track economic stats as well as housing indicators so that we could understand our markets better? Well, you're in luck because in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Federal Reserve Economic Data API in order to programmatically get all the data that you need for free to analyze your market at a high level. My name is Ariel Herrera with the Analytics Ariel channel, where we bridge the gap between real estate and technology. If you're a data geek like me, or you're just getting your feet wet into real estate and technology, then please subscribe to this channel so you get the latest content available. As well, if you like these type of tutorials, then please like this content so I know to make more of it. All right, let's get started. If you haven't seen any of the previous videos on FRED, I highly suggest you do. They're not about programming, just how to navigate the actual website, what's in it, and how to create some easy drag and drop dashboards. However, sometimes we don't need nice interface dashboards. We need the data behind it so we could start doing modeling and actually be able to understand trends in a deeper level. FRED Economic Data, if you're new to this, they basically, the Federal Reserve pulls in data from multiple data sources, such as the Census, the Bureau, Realtor, and more. As you can see here, I'm on their home site. You could look at some search terms that are trending, such as unemployment rate, inflation, consumer price index, interest rate. If Even if you're new to real estate, you definitely have heard of interest rate being a very hot indicator that people look at in determining how the housing market is trending. Well, let's actually jump into how we programmatically get this data. So with Fred, the first step in order to be able to use their API is to go to my account, sign up for an account, which you could do with Google. And then afterwards, you're going to go to API keys. Now for API keys, if you already have one, it's going to show up at the bottom. However, if you don't, you need to click this button called Request API Key. If in only a couple of minutes, you'll get an email from Fred, and then you'll be able to get your key at the bottom. Now hold on to your key for a moment, and let's actually jump into how this is used. So right now I'm in Google Collab, which is an environment that you can code in Python as well as other languages. The reason why I love Google Collab is because it's on the cloud, so you don't have to have Python or any programming language installed locally. And if you want to use this, you could simply click the link below, go to File, and you can save a copy to your own drive so that you can run this yourself. So ultimately, we want to be able to get data from Fred. So let's think of an example use case. Well, in a previous video, I went over an article called Predicting the Housing Market is Easier Than You Think. This article was pretty interesting in some of the indicators that the author used in order to assess the housing market, one of them being building permits. In this article, the author also puts an attachment to where this data lives, which is for the Census Bureau. And as we see here, we can get the data by say metropolitan or state or region. So let's just say state on a monthly basis. If we wanted to grab this in Excel, we can click August, which in my case is the latest. Warning, the Excel file does take a little bit of time to load, but it does give us information on a breakdown of United States. Then we have the regions, Northeast, Midwest, so on, and then the states underneath them, as well as the housing permits. So if we wanted to develop our own model or assess our market, we can copy the data straight from Excel, but of course, we do not do things inefficiently. Getting things programmatically means no errors and you can reproduce it rather quickly. Now going to a blog post that was written by Steve, 
actually used Panda's Data Reader, which is a library and the Federal Reserve economic data in order to extract this information. This is a super useful step-by-step -step blog that talks about how to get any of the series data that you want. So in our case, we want to get the building permits. Instead of it being in Excel, we want to get it programmatically with Python. And if we find it in FRED, we could see if we look at the state of California, new private housing units, building permits, and we see that same data here. It's on a monthly cadence. And if we go to the release and click it, we could see it brings us back to the same exact website that we were just on. So we know this is the golden source of truth for this data. This right here is the series. This is how you actually get the data. And if we go back to this pandas tutorial, we see the author installs pandas data reader, which allows us to query the FRED data. We import the libraries here. And then in order to get the information, we need to specify the start and end date. So do we want the data for the whole year? Do we want it just for a single month? We specify what series we want, which in this case would be this one here. And then we're able to get an output of that data. So let's actually try that in Collab. Now I'm going to install that same library. I'm adding the dash Q so that it's quietly installing and not returning a million lines back. Then I'm going to run this to import some libraries. You can also click this play button here to run, or you can go to runtime and just run all as well. I'm doing shift enter as a shortcut. I have some functions here, which I'll explain later on that I created. And then this part here is more specific to myself. So that Fred API key that you got earlier, you want to put this within strings. So if in quotes and then put it in here, in my case, I am retrieving it from a data frame. So I'm just going to read in the variable as is. I took the series from that page and pasted it here. This is the original link to it. And I'm following the same exact steps that the author had within the blog where I am putting my parameters of what I want. So this is for the California new building permits. And I want it to start from the beginning year of 2021 and stop the data at the end of August. So I'm going to run these two. And you could see I do get the output of the date and the building permits data. Now the reason why I created a additional function is because the date itself comes back as an index, which makes it a little bit more difficult to query later on. So I'm using the same line of code that was in that blog, and then I'm just resetting the index. So that date is a column there. Cool. Now I love, love, love using Plotly to plot stuff. And Plotly Express is a really useful library in Python in order to have interactive charts. Right here, I just entered in a data frame. Data frame is like a table. I specified what column I want to have as my x-axis, so horizontally going across, which is usually some sort of time series. So I have date there. And then my y-axis up and down, I am plotting this column name, which is the series for California building permits. And we could see the trend from January 2021 Permits decreased, increased in March, and then decreased for some time and slowly going back up. Not really much I can infer from this. What it would be really interesting is to actually look at this data, not just for California, but for other states in the United States, so that I can assess states that are similar. Is this lower towards the ranks of new building permits or other states having a lot more explosion in building? Right now, I can't tell that, but on Fred's page, if I go to view map, I can quickly get a visual as to which states have the most housing permits. We could see Texas, Florida, Georgia, California, New York, and this definitely is going to be skewed in states that are larger just because there's more homes in them. I don't think it's adjusted for that, but it's a really great visual to quickly see what the data looks like 
for the most recent month. Now, what if we want to get this data into an Excel spreadsheet across all of these states? It would really, really suck to have to look up each of these states one by one in Fred, go to Alaska, find whatever that series was, and then copy this. The copying and pasting is not what we want to do. Now, this is where you're using Fred's API directly, which is why you need your key. So we do next is we want to get all the states for the building permit series and get that series ID. Now, in order to do that, we query Fred. We need to pass in our Fred API key, the series, which remember is this value up here. And what this function is doing is it's going to the endpoint for stlouis.org data series ID, passing in a series ID, and then passing in the API key. We're getting the data back and we're returning it. Then I'm also adding another function called transform series response. Since it's not really fun to look at data unless it's in a tabular format, at least for me, since I used to be very heavy in Excel. So this transforms it to be a data frame so we could read it a little bit more easily. Now, from what we could see here is just by running this, we passed in the California series for new building. And now we have all of the series IDs for all of the states. And this is pretty huge because now we can go grab the data across all states pretty fast. So how do we do that next? We want to get all of those series IDs to a list so that we can pass it through again into that previous function. So right here, I'm getting all the series IDs to a list. I'm showing the first five just so you could see what that looks like. And it says that there's 52 items in this list, which there's 52 states. So that makes me feel very confident that we're doing this correctly. Now we want to do is set a range for time. So my start time is gonna be the beginning of the year again. My end date, I'm just going to put today, which is going to give us the latest data. And I'm again going to the function get Fred data. I passed in all 52 states, what their series codes were. I put in the start date, the end date, and this is gonna take a little bit of time to run because it's going to all 52 series. But once it runs, which only took a couple of seconds, we now see for all those dates that I requested, and I'm only showing the first five, all those dates, we see all of the data for, for those states going across. Really, really cool. But this is still not really digestible, at least for me to use. What do we want to do next? We want to get all of these states into a single column and the values into another. So there should be three columns here, date, state, and permits. This is also going to be easier if you're looking at this data by downloading it or you're looking to model it. So by using pandas library, I'm able to call melt, which allows me to transform my data set. Think of like a pivot table, similar to that. So I'm passing in my new data frame, which is data frame for permits all series. My ID is going to be that date column. And then all my values that should be these values here should represent each of the series. So for all the states, then my variable name is going to be state. This is not needed, but I just want to rename stuff so it sounds a little bit better. State and permits. So now I have all the data. In this case, this is for Alabama for the permits with those eight months, the code, and then the value for the permits. Now, in order to plot this data, it's pretty simple. I'm copying my data frame, and then I don't want to see this whole code because it's not really useful. I have no idea what this means. So by taking just the first two characters of this column, I'm able to get the state right away. So in this case, I'm getting Alabama. And now I can plot this data in order to view it. Now, if you want to use Plotly Express, very easy. They have a lot of great documentation on their library to use basic charts. Used to not be this simple, but about 
two or three years ago, they created the express package on top. So it's only a single line of code to create some really nice looking visuals. And by clicking this, I could see an example where I could directly just copy this, go back to my notebook, open up code, paste it, run it, and I'm able to run the same exact code and then just tweak it slightly for my use case, which is what I did below. I'm creating a line plot where I input my data frame. I'm specifying what's my x-axis column, y-axis. How do I want to separate the data, which is by the state column. I want to see the data separated per state. And then I can actually establish my title, which is new private house and units authorized by building permits. The last part here is actually downloading this data so that you could play with it in Excel. So I'm going to run all of this just to make sure I didn't skip any of these cells. If you're new to Python, what I'm doing here is I'm calling different variable names so that my file name is going to be series, start date, end date each time. And that only took a handful of seconds, so probably less than 10 seconds. And now I have my CSV file, which is here. So I see date, state permits. So if you're looking to do modeling or get more data, I would say to repeat this process, but for all of those series that you care about and maybe having 10 to 20 columns or so for each state or metropolitan area, however you want to do it. If you're looking to up your game in Python, whether you're a complete newbie or you already have some experience, please feel free to look at my one-on-one -on -one coaching in the link below, and we could set up plans and milestones to have you become an expert. All right, thanks for watching.